All right, guys, so my first job is I do need to just got to polar align this mount first. My little mount, my HEQ5, because I moved it the other day. Moved the front foot, so I'm going to have to re polar align this one. It shouldn't take me too long. No, I don't want to do an update. Thank you very much. Um, also trying to avoid mosquitoes at the moment. I've already been bit a couple of times and I can feel them trying to kill me. All right, guys, here we are in um, Picks Insight. So now, I don't normally do Picks Insight. Um, I don't normally do that many Picks Insight videos because I'm not that great at it. Um, but this one is a fairly simple. This is a fairly simple process. I didn't do a lot with this image, to be honest. So it might be good if you're. It, it might be good if you've not used it that much, or if you just want to look at the very basic steps that I took, because it really wasn't. Um, it really wasn't that involved. This was kind of the image that I that came out of Astro Pixel processor. Um, so if I sort of stretch that, you'll kind of get this green, obviously, because it's a one-shot color. Um, it's a one-shot color camera, so you always get this sort of really heavy green cast over everything. Um, and you know, to to remedy that, what you'll use is you'll use this background neutralization. So you'll run background neutralization over it. Um, and then what I did is I ran um, dynamic background extraction over the image. Um, so you know, just the normal thing of um, pick a few points in the background where it's where you know it's not over the nebulosity itself just the black points and um, so I think I chose three or four different points and I ran dynamic background extraction and I think from memory then I did just a basic color calibration um, on the image I played around a bit because I kind of wanted what I was after with this image primarily is I'm really after the hydrogen in the background the clouds as much as I am the actual um, you know, Orion and the horse set as well. So I really wanted it to be kind of more like a swirly, cloudy sort of image. Um, so yeah, really, I mean, to, in its basic form, all I was doing was a background neutralization, a uh, dynamic background and a color calibration, really. So, you know, not stretched or anything by that point. Um, yeah. So let's just move these out of the way for a second. And obviously, um, the other two things that I would have done, um, you know, they seem obvious. Um, I would have just done a, a dynamic crop on the image to get rid of all these, um, to get rid of all these sections here. So I've obviously gone and dragged the sides in just to crop it, um, and I would have done a rotation. So you, just under processes, you've got your rotation, um, rotation there, and obviously rotated it 90 degrees. Now would have come out with something approaching this. So as you can see, you know, that's not looking bad considering I've really not done much apart from those few steps. Um, one thing I'll mention at this stage is that this is just the, um, this has not been drizzled at all. Um, and the camera combination with a little 135 millimeter lens means that I know it's gonna be a bit blocky when I get into these stars, you see how I've got this undersampled look of blockiness. Um, so I will be drizzling this later and I'll show you that. But before I do that, I'll just show you. I did use Blur Exterminator for the first time on this image. I just downloaded the trial version. And if we look at this, um, I know this will be different. Sometimes this is difficult to see. Um, but if we sort of zoom in and look, I don't know if you can see, but this is the one on the left without Blur Exterminator, and this is the one on the right. Now you do need to do this in a linear state, so don't stretch your image. But I can certainly see the one on the left here is obviously softer. The one on the right's got a much sharper around the horse's head, and you can see this much sharper defined line um, along the clouds here. So definitely worth having a look at that, I would say. Um, 
and I think yeah like me you can just get the the trial at the moment I think it's like a 29 day trial or something so I'm pretty happy with that so far but like we say it did need drizzling so we then went we did the same thing this is the same image it's just been drizzled um, and if I let's just for one second let's just unlink that so all this has had is rotation but if we look into the stars now you see how the stars are far less blocky so definitely looking a lot less blocky now because of that drizzle of course your image is going to be bigger so our image has now gone up to 10,000 by 6,000 in terms of pixels um, and that will present some challenges just so you know when you're working with images of this size you know do be careful when you're performing big operations because it's easy to crash your machine or you know run out of space run out of memory um, so it's good to do things like for example if you want to test something just work in a preview you know just work in your sort of preview rather than your full image um, I did find with this even Astro Pixel processor when I did the drizzle in, in the stacking software Astro Pixel processor it actually didn't have enough space it needed about 250 gig and I didn't have that available on my main hard drive so I had to plug in my external drive and just um, and just use that um, so yeah space can be an issue um, and I think I even had Photoshop crash on me um, because I was running PixInsight and Photoshop at the same time and I guess the size of the images um, so yeah just something to be aware of with these big images okay so I think at this stage again probably just had the basics on it I think this is just had a soft stretch applied to it so just you know the easy processing suite um, soft stretch I did play around taking the stars out a couple of different ways but in in the case of this image I actually found just doing a soft stretch and taking the stars out that way worked for me better sometimes I'll take the stars out in linear um, but in this case I found that it worked better just with a soft stretch so you can see it's got the makings there of an image it's just that the, the red is not coming out so we would have used or I would have used star exterminator then to take out um, all the stars which you can see here and I really like these images because this is actually what I'm interested in all this red around it um, and like I said you know 13 hours in each panel um, still looks obviously a little bit sort of noisy in areas but we can get rid of that with um, using noise exterminator at the end there's a lot of exterminators you'll notice here Russell's tools you know star exterminator now blur exterminator so you would probably use blur exterminator first which is basically like your deconvolution to get a little bit more sharpening then you're going to use star exterminator like this to get rid of your stars so you can just work on the image and then at the end you'll probably use noise exterminator to um, you know as it says get rid of some of that noise and smooth out your image so there's some great tools out there now and you can really see like you know between the blur exterminator tool here and um, I think I've also applied some multi-scale linear transform on this image it's really nicely sharpened up this area around the horse head now when I did this or when I rather when I do these actions um, around sharpening I've probably only done it with masks around Orion or the horse head so you'll see um, you probably can't see these very well but I've actually got a bunch of masks um, off to my right here um, let's have a look if I can just sh show you for a second so I just move my face out of the way for a minute there's a bunch of masks behind here um, and I'll just show you what's happening with those so often with images like this you're going to want to work on you're going to work on one part of the image and protect another part of the image so it's just the same old thing that you know a lot of us do all the time I think there you know I can see I've got a horse head and Orion together which I'm probably protecting um, I've got this image where I'm I'm probably maybe I'm dealing with some areas in the background or trying to bring the background out um, 
and then these are all about the Orion Nebula so I was using these to try and deal with the brightness here I'm never going to get rid of you know that's always going to be overexposed at seven minute exposures but I can at least start to bring in some detail um, you know the further out I get from the core so that's what a lot of these little masks were for and I was using those with this tool sorry not that tool I was using those with local histogram equalization and the mask to basically tone down that area alright so yeah I would have used the um, local histogram equalization tool uh, and a mask and then yeah I've got a I've got a, a range of different masks here I'd have I think I have one somewhere, I'm not sure where, but I think I have one mask here which has got the main two areas um, highlighted. There we go, so I would have used that and I would have used the inverse of that to bring out much more of that background. So as we get down here to the bottom, you can see we're really starting to, um, you know, we're really starting to bring out our background. We do have a little bit of a I do have a little bit of an issue here with the join in the middle of the two sections. I think I'd, I had to play with the colours a bit to try and minimise that. There's also options in Astro Pixel Processor which I, I could probably go back to and use a bit better um, to deal with that. So that's kind of how we're looking there. And if we look at our, if we kind of look at our final image here, you know, basically this has been taken into Photoshop. I've played around with contrast. I've brought the black level in a bit, you know, to give a bit more of a spacey feel. Um, spacey feel. <laughs> um, I've, I think I've um, played with saturation and vibrancy to really push the, the reds and the oranges in this. And I've probably played with contrast a bit. So you don't need that many tools in Photoshop really to start to bring something out. And I think I put the stars back in in Photoshop too, just using the screen layer. Um, yeah, and that's what we got, guys. So, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. I hope you might have got something out of that video. Thanks for, thanks for following along. Um, like I say, I don't, I don't really do these that often, but, you know, maybe one of you guys have picked something in there that might be useful for you. Um, yeah, so all I can do now is I'll say I hope you have a nice Christmas, a nice new year. Um, if you did like the video, maybe consider a like and a subscribe. That's always super duper cool. And um, I'll leave you with the final image. So catch you later, guys. And very clear skies to you.